Well, welcome to another midweek service on YouTube. On behalf of Mark Jenks, our producer, and myself, Pastor Mark Wilms of Bethlehem Lutheran in Royal Iowa, as we begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Pray the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We haven't done the creed in a while. I think it would be good to repeat that to make sure that our, the screens of our faith mind are refreshed with the words of our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Show us your mercy, O God, and grant us your salvation. Give us the joy of your saving help again, and sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Give peace in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Keep the nations under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth and your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create me a clean heart, O God, and sustain me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come before you. Amen. We continue on our walk through the Twelve Disciples. We have covered uh, actually five so far, and we'll take a brief look at four more today and then close out with three more next week. And we have some interesting ones. One of the disciples has two names, maybe even three. His name is Bartholomew or Nathaniel, but we know him best as Nathaniel. Philip told Nathaniel one day that they had found the, uh, the one predicted in Moses and the prophets, in other words, the Messiah. Nathaniel was a bit cynical, uh, didn't jump on board very easily to things, and he sort of made a joke when Philip said uh, that he came out of Nazareth. Nathaniel said, Nazareth? What good could come out of Nazareth? Because Nazareth was considered, oh, just kind of a nowhere town. Well, Philip said, come and see. So he came, and uh, as he was walking towards him, Jesus said to him, uh, well, look, here comes a person uh, who is uh, not sneaking. <laughs> now, that was kind of a hidden joke uh, that only somebody who knew Nathaniel could understand. He was doing a play on, uh, he said, here comes an Israelite who is not sneaky. And Nathaniel said, where do you know me from? Uh, and Jesus said, well, I saw you under the fig tree a little while ago. Now, there was no way that any normal human being would have known that Nathaniel was sitting under a fig tree out of sight from Jesus. Immediately, Nathaniel knew he was dealing with somebody special. And so, Nathaniel went over to the other side and recognized that, at the very least, Jesus was a special one sent by God, and that was the beginning of Nathaniel's walk with Jesus. Kind of related to Nathaniel, because he was not somebody to believe something too quickly, is another disciple who we remember by the name of Thomas, specifically Doubting Thomas. Uh, Thomas actually comes from a word meaning twin, 
which means he might have been a twin. Uh, his other name was Didymus, which means that. He's best known as the Doubting Thomas because after the other disciples had seen Jesus risen from the dead and Thomas happened not to be there at that event, he famously said, I'm not going to believe you guys until I can put my finger right in the wounds of Jesus. Can't blame him for that because nobody expected this amazing resurrection of Jesus Christ to happen. Later on, Thomas was at a gathering of the disciples, and Jesus indeed did appear as risen from the dead, and said to Thomas, you want to put your hands right at my side and feel my hands? Go right ahead, because they're real. And that's when Thomas fell down before the Lord and said, my God and uh, my Lord, and confessed Jesus as God, and God, by the way, did not refuse that worship of him, just another proof that Jesus is God. Uh, but let's not be too hard on, quote, doubting Thomas, because also uh, when the disciples one time did not want to go where Jesus wanted to go because of the danger in that area of the anti-Jesus people, Thomas said, let's go and die with him. Uh, so he had a brave streak to him that we always have to remember in regards to Thomas, and like Nathaniel, we can hardly blame him for wanting to have proof of these amazing things happening. Another interesting person, Matthew, who also went by the name Levi, probably the writer of the first of the four Gospels. Matthew was probably the most despised, socially, member of the Twelve Disciples. Matthew was a tax collector. In those days, uh, people who were tax collectors were despised, not just because we all love to hate the IRS agents, I guess, uh, but also because in those days they really were corrupt. Uh, they worked for the Roman government, they charged their fellow countrymen uh, inflated prices because the Romans said, we want so much from you, what you can get beyond that is your business, not ours. And so, of course, that led to a lot of abuse. They were really hated, maybe even more than the prostitute class. Matthew was one of those. But Jesus reached out to everybody, the worst of the worst. Uh, and he was criticized for that. But when he met Matthew and called him, uh, Matthew followed him. And also Jesus went to a party that Matthew held in favor of his newfound, to celebrate his newfound faith. And Jesus hung around. He didn't sin or anything like that. but. He showed concern for not only Matthew, but also the unsavory people that Matthew hung out with. A chance to tell them about the good news of the gospel. And he was criticized for it by the self-righteous Pharisees. Matthew was one of those, and he became an excellent disciple and writer of the first gospel later. Finally today, we end up with James, the son of Alphaeus. Not too much on this one. Uh, this James was possibly the brother of Matthew, who I just talked about. He's often identified with James, the younger son of Mary. Uh, scholars generally don't regard him as another James called the brother of Jesus. Brother could mean different kinds of male relatives, so the, the tales are, or the, the titles are fluid as far as we're concerned. Uh, but maybe James the Younger was used to distinguish him from the other James of Zebedee that we talked about a couple of weeks ago. He was probably literally younger or smaller in stature. We don't have a lot of activity or statements, no statements by James the Younger, uh, but he was one of the twelve. And so certainly he must have had some kind of special ability or potential that Jesus saw in him to become one of the twelve of Jesus' closest disciples. Well, we have some more next week that we'll talk about, including the villain, Judas Iscariot, and a couple of others. But in the meantime, I hope that you're finding this walk through the disciples helpful for you, and of some spiritual help, too, because we can learn not only from their good points, but also their mistakes about the gospel of Jesus Christ. I close with this prayer. Gracious Jesus, our Lord and our God, uh, you bore the sins of 
on your own body on the tree of the cross, so that we, being dead to sin, might live unto righteousness. We thank you for the God, uh, for the apostles who lived the, imperfectly as they were for you, much as we can. Have mercy on us, strengthen us in our service for you, and grant to us in our last hour with all the others who are your servants, uh, a holy and peaceful life in this world and salvation with you in heaven, with the Father and the Holy Spirit, eternal glory, where you live and reign, God forever. Amen. May God, Almighty Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now, and may you have a wonderful week. See you next week.